Welcome back to Early Edition. A new law aims to address many of the problems hounding the mining sector today, including open pit mining. This measure is called the Alternative Minerals Management Bill, which was crafted in consultation with environment NGOs, indigenous peoples, and mining affected communities. The measure will ban the extraction of ore minerals for export and allow people affected by mining projects to take part in the approval of mining permits through the creation of a multi-sectoral ma mineral management council. Now here to tell us more about this piece of legislation is the bill's author, Congressman Teddy Bagirat. Good morning, Congressman. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, TJ. All right. Uh, well, uh, quite timely, uh, the discussion on this bill, although before we got on air, we were talking about this, that you've had this for quite some time. Uh, yeah. When did you first craft this? The, in the 15th Congress, right. my when first term, no? mm -hmm. it's the one 2012. No? Uh, so every, every Congress, we, we file this. Mm -hmm. you know? So hopefully in this 17th Congress, my, my last term, it's interesting to note some that, headway. Yeah. And, and you know, with that, interesting to note that this was uh, an advocacy already for you and your group who support you, even before mm. the big, you know, when, when it was really major headlines when mm. Secretary Gina Lopez yeah. was at the DNR and there was discussion about mining every single yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, we were so hopeful at mm -hmm. her appointment mm -hmm. as a secretary because she was with us already in advocacy. During the time, right. Uh, previous in previous Congresses. Mm -hmm. no? And especially in the last son of the president, no? Yung, the first part, the initial part of his son, no? was mm -hmm. dedicated to the right. ills of the mining mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. no? uh, and there have been already numerous protests by indigenous communities, local communities, mm -hmm. as to the detrimental effects of mining in their area. So, oh. na na, right. na, na So you've time. seen these cracks in the wall? Yeah, 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 yeah I've, time. I've uh, chaired the Committee on Indigenous Peoples no, in the 15th Congress, and mm -hmm. most of the inquiries we've done in Congress is about the ill effects of mining mining in indigenous communities. Right, no? right. Sila. Mm -hmm. There's displacement of the IPs, hum, human rights violations. Almost every month, there was a period na almost every month there were killings of tribal leaders who uh -huh. were opposing mining uh, activities okay. in their area. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. There's militarization. So, ang daming mga reklamo. And, and so, for us, uh, the, the radical approach is mm -hmm. really to craft a new mining right. law. Okay, uh -huh. now let's, let's uh, break down some of the details here so that the public can understand this. Uh, first of all, um, the big headliner is you're talking about mineral management and yeah. not mining. I mean, just just give us some context of how that alone makes uh, logical sense. Well, uh, we, we we see uh, minerals, of course, we, this are natural resources, mm -hmm. no. But it has to be managed in such a way that it's for the benefit of the Filipinos. Okay. So let's start with who benefits right now with with the current mining uh, setup. Setup. Mm -hmm. No, uh, it's export oriented. Mm -hmm. Uh, we export raw material. Mm -hmm. So, pag dala mo sa Japan, they process it, mm -hmm. they come out with so many minerals because technology has already improved. Mm -hmm. And then the taxes are collected largely in foreign countries. Mm -hmm. Samantha lang dito, you just declare that you're mining for ore. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. no? But when you export it, you, you especially that the most uh, economically feasible for mining companies is open pit mining. Mm -hmm. So, bundok-bundok yung hinuhukay mo and then right. it's just ship it abroad. No? Mm -hmm. uh, second, uh, of course, there's always environmental costs. No? Kahit anong sabihin mo na they, they come out with terms as responsible mining. No? Mm -hmm. na, but there's going to be environmental costs. There's right. going to be loss of biodiversity. Uh, there's going to be displacement uh, in terms of livelihood. No? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, in point in, in Eastern Samar, no, in Samanikani Island, nag, it's, a, it's a small island, it has four barangays, 3,000 residents, and mm -hmm. there's mining at the middle of the island. Wow. And it affects the livelihood of the fishing communities mm -hmm. no, in that area. So ngayon, they're, they're asking for, uh, kasi mag-expire na yung kanilang mining concession, they're asking the DNR not to renew mm -hmm. the, the, the mining the uh, concession, the mm -hmm. license. But um, the thing is, uh, it's now up to the secretary to decide whether to renew it or not. But mm -hmm. under our bill, we have also already identified no-go mining zones, which mm -hmm. includes small island ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've specified uh, a bunch of them and and then we were talking about this before we got on air. Kumbaga sir, you're, 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 you're aiming for the stars as much as you can. Uh, this will be debated along the way. Yeah, of you course. Know? Just, of course. Just like the, some of these are very debatable when you say densely populated yeah. residential areas. Now, the, the definition of densely populated, that will be debatable, Definitely, right? it, it has to be explained well no, as yeah. to what we mean uh, by densely populated. Mm -hmm. 
well, one thing, logically, you cannot do mining in an urban center. Mm -hmm. Sabi nga nila, yung kinakatwiran ng, ng Chamber of Mines, why is it that in Australia, in Africa, there's mining, but nobody's complaining? Mm -hmm. Sabi naman namin, yeah, because you have the outback. Mm -hmm. You have deserts. Mm -hmm. Wala naman mga tao or, no, or, Samantalang or, dito yeah. sa Pilipinas, you know, we are the fifth most mineralized country in the world. Mm -hmm. And yet, we are an archipelago. Mm -hmm. So, 7,000 islands and majority of them are very small and inhabited. Right, right. So, meron talagang environmental costs. Mm -hmm. no? That's why we place island ecosystems, critical watersheds, mm -hmm. no? uh, agricultural lands. Dahil nga, may, may oh, pag mag-mining ka, may always impact yan sa agriculture. Right. Uh, and, and because we're also uh, looking at food security, mm -hmm. you know, we have 110 million Filipinos eating rice mm -hmm. three times a day. So, agriculture lands are also important. But pag may mining doon, uh, maapektado yung, right. yung uh, um, agricultural lands natin. Um, sacred sites of indigenous peoples, mm -hmm. the burial grounds. Right, no? right. So, so marami actually. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a debate, a discussion. Sure, yeah. There's going to be lobby groups saying, you know, let's remove this, right. let's see, because they're saying, so where are we going to be mining? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, but ang sabi lang natin, uh, it, there's going to be really a sacrifice because, as I've said, we are an archipelago. Right. And, and uh, envir the ecological cost, the cost to human rights, to display displacement of communities is very well, high yeah. in an archipelago. Right. The risk is high. All right, yeah. now, um, when, when, if this is all approved, then, you know, the rules are there. Interestingly enough, you, you put also that in your proposed bill that this will be approved by a committee, a multi-sectoral mineral yeah. management council, which will include the local, local communities. communities. And this is different from what we have now. We're in its... It's just the DNR. The DNR. Uh -huh. So how much more powerful and, um, I guess, uh, committed will the local communities be when you give them this kind of power? We, we want the decision-making to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if there's going to be um, an environmental disaster or if there's going to be problems with the mining uh, mm -hmm. sector, it's the local communities that will be af uh, mostly affected. Mm -hmm. And saan sila tumatakbo rin? So, sa local government units, right. sa mayor, sa governor. Mm -hmm. So, that's why the, the LGUs are also included there. Mm -hmm. no? So, aside from government agencies, you have the local communities and the LGUs. So, all sectors, the primary stakeholders no, in uh, a proposed mining area uh, are involved in the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. no? So, aside from the no-go zones or the prohibited areas, mm -hmm. Now it's up to the community, right. uh, DNR, and, and the local government units to decide whether they want mining or not. Mm. Alam naman eh, we're not saying that we don't want mining. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's it's also uh, important to us to have minerals, especially mm. what we're pushing for is an industrialization right. program. We need that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we need minerals now. But uh, let the communities, the local government units, which will be really mostly severely affected by mining, decide mm. right. whether they want mining or not. Parang case in point in Palawan. Mm -hmm. Palawan, uh, they have the Sustainable Development Council. Sila yung nagpapasya kung, kung gusto ba nila yung mining o hindi. Right. No? Palawan is a biodiversity enclave. Mm -hmm. It's also a tourism yep. area. Mm -hmm. It's a very inhabited uh, province. So, mag decision sila. Gusto ba natin ng mining? Pero apektado yung ating turismo. Right, right. Because, let's face it, no? the mining and tourism and agriculture... No, it's not a healthy mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very challenging yeah, to have yeah, it all yeah, yeah, coexisting yeah, yeah. in a small area. In a small area, yeah, in, yes, an, yes. in an island uh, ecosystem. Right, right. Like the Philippines, uh, we have 7,000 mm -hmm. small islands. Right. So, so yun ang kinakailangan pagpasyahan ng mm -hmm. multi-sectoral management uh, council. Uh, and uh, for us, it also gives the power to the local communities. Mm -hmm. So, kung karoon ng problema, well, it, it's your decision. Right. No? Uh, and, and you gotta specify, you gotta clarify, a local community is not just LGUs. Yeah, We're talking about communities. NGOs, indigenous groups as well, uh, who will be involved. Yeah, yeah. like, like uh, many of the mining concessions now are ancestral domains. Mm -hmm. no? uh, under the law, yung sa Indigenous Peoples Rights Act, pag siya ay uh, lugar o pamayanan ng katutubo, mm -hmm. there's the free prior informed consent. So you mm -hmm. have to go cons get the consent of the indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. no? uh, they're also within an LGU, mm -hmm. or overlapping LGU. So, napakahalaga na mapakinggan yung yung pasya ng right. ng indigenous peoples or the local communities mm -hmm. no and but we we do also consider the uh, ascendancy of the LGUs to mm -hmm. to decide no in fact one of the proposals though the provisions of the proposed bill is to give directly the royalties to the LGUs 
Kasi ngayon, right. much of the share from the national wealth, we call mm -hmm. the share from the national wealth, goes to the national government and mm -hmm. then they remit it to the LGO. So, so this time you want it to go directly? Directly, down. because mm -hmm. yun nga, uh, if, if there's a problem or, or if you want to mitigate the effects of mining, mm -hmm. the LGO is the first uh, right. level of government that you approach. Mm -hmm. no? So dapat sila yung, yung matulungan talaga no? ng, ng mining, uh, mining industry in terms of the share from mm -hmm. the national wealth. Right, okay. Now, uh, aside from how it's done, um, it's interesting that uh, you're also proposing who is going to do this, um, as opposed to, you know, nowadays a bunch of them are multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. You want to insist only Filipino-owned corporations will be allowed to extract minerals. Now, now uh, how will this work out? I mean, uh, what's the purpose of this? Do you want, obviously, more of the bulk of the income to go straight to Filipino, to Filipinos, wholly owned companies. Yeah, and and that supports our proposal that the processing has to be done in the Philippines. Processing as well, uh -huh. because currently we're shipping out the raw. Materials. Yeah, yeah, and uh -huh. and uh, the the industry does not support a an economic program, no, a, mm -hmm. a holistic industrialization program for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So if it's largely uh, led by Filipino companies, mm -hmm. then definitely the mindset is, oh, we're doing this for the Philippines. Right, no? right. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, there are more jobs. Mm -hmm. no? uh, because right now, uh, according to data, no, the mining industry employs only about 250,000 uh, people nationwide. Mm -hmm. And many of them are not even from the local communities that are affected. No? Mm -hmm. So, ang sabi natin is, perhaps if you make it more Philippine-oriented in terms of the players no, mm -hmm. leading the industry, in terms of uh, the decision-making process, and the benefits accrue to the Philippines, then you'll have more jobs also created in right. the local communities. Right, no? right, right, exactly. Uh -oh. Okay, well, uh, aside from this, uh, let's get a bit more in the taxes uh, set up. You, mm -hmm. you talk about how the local communities should benefit more from these taxes. Um, is this going to have to be a separate thing that you're working with? Uh, could it be part of the new tax uh, discussion? or? Uh, on its own, uh, you can set it up here. Well, it, it, it could be. Uh, right now, uh, what we're proposing is 10% excise taxes okay. that, that goes to the national government. Mm -hmm. no? In fact, dito sa train, yung discussions right now with the BICAM, uh, they have proposed an increase of 4%. Mm -hmm. So from 2% to 4%. So okay. I mean, it's 10%. Mm -hmm. This is on top of, let's say, whatever royalties that the LGUs or indigenous communities can ask the mining companies. Mm -hmm. no? Ang sasabihin nila, that's too much. Mm -hmm. Pero sa akin naman, but the environmental cost of doing mining in a small island ecosystem right. is also very heavy. Yes, yes. No? In fact, uh, other countries are actually raising uh, their taxes. Mm -hmm. no? Indonesia has actually banned already the export of uh, mineral ore. Wow. Mm -hmm. no? uh, because yun nga, nakikita nila yung effect doon sa kanilang environment, mm -hmm. sa loss of biodiversity. Now we're talking about climate change, mm -hmm. no? uh, disaster risk reduction. So, so what we're saying that mining gives us benefits but at the same time it also has uh, economic and mm -hmm. environmental cost no mm -hmm. so so sa amin is uh, dagdagan na natin yung right. yung binabayad nila no uh, for instance no um uh, we're proposing a lot of increase in excise taxes no mm -hmm. uh, tobacco liquor right. yan which affects our farmers directly mm -hmm. in terms of tobacco. Right. Uh, hindi ko naman sinasabi na masama yun because it's also a health measure. Mm -hmm. eh, how about mining na 2% lang yung excise taxes? Mm -hmm. no? uh, according to data nga, ano eh, uh, the contributions to the gross domestic product of mining is just is less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Even though we are the fifth, fifth most, most mineralized, mineralized country in the world, in the world, in the in world, the number world. one, I think, in gold, mm -hmm. uh, top three in copper, mm -hmm. nickel. So nagulat nga sila, no, that an archipelago <laughs> of small islands, mm -hmm. and then we are the fifth most mineralized country. Mm -hmm. So that's why sa amin is okay. Pili na lang natin yung lugar. Mm -hmm. And let's really maximize no, right. the benefits that we will get from these selected uh, mining concessions mm -hmm. in some parts of the country. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, let's let's strengthen agriculture. Mm -hmm. Tourism has always been you know, uh, uh, a, a prime uh, earner for mm -hmm. the country, and and the country has to decide now, no. Uh, what's going to be our direction right. in terms of development? But there definitely. Unless there's a new uh, uh, setup, no mining, tourism, agriculture, mga mahirap ipagsabay in an archipelago. Mm -hmm. Have you had any projections of, uh, let's say, an example of an amount that communities or LGUs can make more? I've, of, you've mentioned the ten percent, but just 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 top of mind, what kind of amount can they make? And then, given that kind of money, how they can develop internally themselves? 
without yeah. uh, relying so much on the national government. Yeah. Well, for one, because if you allow mining in your in your community, no, almost always there's going to be displacement. Yeah. May mga magasaka, mga indigenous peoples. But well, they allow it. Mm -hmm. eh, no? So, so ano yung economic cost, no? So this is where the money can be used to provide livelihood the industry, assistance, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, develop other industries within those communities that have been displaced by mining. Mm -hmm. no? The environmental cost, rin, no? uh, syempre, marami kang aayusin mm -hmm. dahil giniba yung bundok. Right. No? Uh, then, then the LGU has to do some mitigating measures no? and, and that requires a lot of cost also. Mm -hmm. I cannot put a figure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends. Kaya, kaya nga we ask the multi-sectoral uh, management council mm -hmm. and I'm sure there will be Consultants. No? Yeah. There will be environmentalists. There will be scientists. So there will be debate mm -hmm. as to what is the uh, what is the the price of mm -hmm. allowing fair mining. Amount. Is it a fair a amount? A jump from two percent to ten percent is quite big. It's quite, it's yeah. quite big, mm -hmm. no? Uh, but but comparable to other countries, mas mataas talaga sa mga ibang countries, right? No? Mm -hmm. uh, but yun nga, again, this is subject to debate, no? Uh, what we're saying is there's a need to increase right. the excise taxes, no? And um, Minsan kasi ano eh, um, theoretical yung debate eh. mm -hmm. like like uh, in in one uh, hearing sabi ng mining company why is it that the indigenous peoples will ask for a 10% kasi mm -hmm. mal maliban sa excise taxes yeah. we're even proposing for indigenous peoples ang minimum kasi is 1% mm -hmm. they get from the royal the royalty so sabi namin 10% sabi nila why are they asking for 10% and they haven't invested anything in the mining uh, company sabi mm -hmm. namin the land Mm -hmm. is the investment. Right, right. Lupa yan. And, mm -hmm. and for IPs, buhay nila yung lupa. Eh, right. no? mm -hmm. So that's why uh, it's hard to put a, a value. But mm -hmm. you can say na lang yung fair. No? Uh, but what is fair, that's something that is subject to debate. Mm -hmm. no? uh, and, and sa amin rin kasi, this bill is also a rights oriented it's bill. A rights no? issue, it's a rights right? issue. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of self-determination involved. Uh, there's a lot of... Um, Especially now that this is a Human Rights Week, mm -hmm. December 10 is Human Rights Day. So, parang sa tingin namin, it's time also to highlight mm -hmm. that mining is also a rights issue. Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, one of the, um, the provisions namin, if the mining company violates human rights of the community, then that could be grounds for suspension. Mm -hmm or non-granting of their mining permit. Mm -hmm. no? uh, unlike ngayon, pag may environmental disaster, mm -hmm. pag may namatay, you know, they can always shield themselves from uh, from culpability. Mm -hmm. So ngayon, yung penalties, mas, mas linakihan natin. Mm -hmm. And then they cannot just divest themselves from, from the company and say, we don't have any liability. So mm -hmm. now, you can even charge persons mm -hmm. involved in the mining operations directly to court mm -hmm. if you think that they did some some criminal activity right, in that right. area, whether it's environmental or, or human rights violations. Mm -hmm. no? All right. Now, where, where are you right now and where does it go from here? Uh, you did mention that the president spent uh, a significant amount of time yep. in his sauna uh, rallying this, mm -hmm. yet we do know he's got uh, that, that majority in Congress and the support there, but uh, where do you see the disconnect in terms of the support, in terms of pushing this bill right now? Because right now, it's still in the committee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and Although it's still early in, in yeah. uh, this almost midpoint, no, um, in the 15th Congress, it never got out of the committee. Mm -hmm. The same is true in the 16th Congress. At least now, it's na sa technical working group. So okay. in terms of consolidating all of this mining. There are so many mining mm -hmm. uh, proposals. No? Specifically, no-go zone in a specific province. Mm -hmm. Or uh, yun nga, yung processing only in the Philippines. Yeah. But this has already been consolidated into one uh, report. So. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that the committee can immediately discuss this and then bring it to the plenary. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, by, by July, we're having the, another son of the president. Definitely, he'll be asking, so what's now the update mm -hmm. of, of uh, uh, my call for Congress to, do, to pass a new mining law, mm -hmm. no? uh, to, or at least to institutionalize reforms in the mining industry? <laughs> so, sana uh, the leadership among so many priorities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why we're thankful that we're having this, uh, this avenue to discuss about uh, mining bills. And explain the details. Yeah, because else, we've yeah. been talking about a lot of political issues in Congress right now. Mm -hmm. Impeachment, EJKs, uh, human rights violation, martial law. So there are many very pressing issues that mm -hmm. also need to be discussed 
you know, in the international discourse, and mm -hmm. mining is one of them. Mm -hmm. So, so, sana, uh, hopefully, the, the leadership in the House and even in the Senate, mm -hmm. no, can prioritize tackling environmental bills right. because marami naman siya, it's not just mining, mm -hmm. forest, land use, and uh, yun, yeah, as a legislator for the past seven years, no, I've championed a lot of uh, environmental bills, and none of them gets discussed <laughs> adequately mm -hmm. in the plenary. No? Mm -hmm. uh, either pumapasa siya sa House, pero hindi sa Senado, mm -hmm. or mabilis sa Senado, mahirap sa House. Mm -hmm. no? uh, and, and we know how difficult it is to pass a, 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 an environmental law. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of conflicting interests. There are, there are many who would rather have the status quo. In fact, that's the, the mindset of the uh, Chamber of Mines. Mm -hmm. uh, with due respect no, to the Chamber of Mines, which have been regularly attending naman yung mm -hmm. mga committee hearings there, if you ask them what they want, they'd say na okay na yung... We're okay right, or okay right yeah. now. We, mm -hmm. we do acknowledge that there are problems. Mm -hmm. And we do acknowledge that not all members of our chamber are responsible minors. Mm -hmm. no? But by and large, no, the law is okay. You know? We just need to fine-tune the implementation. Mm -hmm. And then here comes Secretary Gina Lopez, mm -hmm. <laughs> which did a mining audit and said, oh, you have a lot of violations. Mm -hmm. no? So it remains to be seen now no, with, with the new Secretary, Secretary Simatu, whether um, the recommendations of the mining audit no, will be acted upon mm -hmm. because actually uh, based on the initial uh, mining audit there are a lot of mining companies who actually yeah. violated yeah. the current law mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. no? but sabi nga ni Secretary Lopez you know, I can only do as much yeah. and probably that's also one of the reasons why he was, she was not uh, confirmed mm -hmm. because sabi nila she went beyond her authority mm -hmm. and, and I, I, I would understand her frustration because I'd like to do this, but the law says, ito lang yung kaya ko, yeah. no? Mm -hmm. So that's why a new mining law is needed. All right. Well, uh, we will see where it goes from here, uh, but at least <laughs> uh, all the details are being laid out now, and it's, yeah. it's much uh, clearer. Uh, and uh, as you said, it does make sense to support the local community. So we'll see where that give and take yeah. will come in, yeah. in uh, as this progresses. So, uh, Congressman uh, Teddy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, TJ. Well, still to come, struggling toy store Toys R Us shuts down over 20 stores in the UK. More on that when early edition returns. Stay with us here.